Jeff here with the Big Shooterist channel. Thanks for tuning in. We get a lot of feedback from you folks that watch the videos and we sincerely appreciate it because it helps us make better videos in the future and I hope we're doing that for you. One common thread that we read is that a lot of you live in areas that can't own some of the NFA firearms that we use in the videos. So we're going to discuss today some Title I versions of some NFA firearms that might get you close enough and allow you to join in on a little bit of the fun. And we're going to start with the VZ-61. Stick around. As you may have noticed in that last clip, this is a semi-automatic, not a full auto version. This is a perfect example of what we like to refer to as trickle-down weaponomics. And that is when a grotesquely ridiculous federal or state law disallows the ownership of something. Uh, a manufacturer or someone in the civilian section will design something that complies with the law to allow people to have what they would like to own. I'd like to make something very, 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 very clear. I'd like to make this so clear that a blind man can see it. Um, Trickle-down weaponomics is not a loophole. When the anti-gunners see something that allows you and I to do something when, we, when, when we're exercising our rights and they don't agree with it, they call it a loophole and that gives the indication that it's, we're doing something wrong or doing something dirty. That's not the case. It is not a loophole. It is complying with the law. And that's a very, very different thing. When they call it a loophole, again, it paints a negative picture. It isn't a loophole. It's complying with the laws that are in place, even as foolish as they are to begin with. I've got some friends that served in the first Gulf War uh, when it went from Operation Desert Shield to Operation Desert Storm. And one of the things that I heard about a lot in, in the firearms industry when they came home, uh, they talked about this neat little machine pistol that they saw an awful lot that we didn't have in the U.S. inventory. And uh, this is the one that they were speaking of. So if, if you're one of the people that wonder who would want a semi-auto variant of, of kind of a heavy uh, pistol to begin with, um, it would be somebody that might have served over there that, uh, that, that found a liking to them but doesn't have the option to own a full auto. And as far as the pistol, that's for those of you that can't own the NFA firearm or aren't really aren't that interested in paying the extra $200 of the, uh, for the NFA transfer tax to own it. So there is a market for these. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, usefulness, I have no idea. That's for you to determine. But I, uh, I enjoy mine an awful lot. And that's enough for me. A little bit of technical data on the uh, Scorpion or the uh, VZ-61. Um, the original full autos have an extremely high rate of fire, uh, close to 1,100 rounds a minute. The last one we tested, I think uh, the average was uh, 1,082 rounds per minute. So it's very, very, very fast. They're chambered in 765 Browning, or more commonly known here as 32 ACP. And um, I'll show you uh, a round compared to a 147 grain federal 9 millimeter round. Uh, we'll see if we can get it close enough so you can tell the difference. In order to help comply with some of the magazine capacity laws that some states have, uh, to the lineup with the 20 round magazine, they have added a 10 round magazine. So if you were watching until you saw this and thought that that took you out of the picture, nah, you got a 10 rounder for it. There's still hope. Now since 1968, we haven't been able to import any uh, full auto firearms for individual ownership. And since 1986, we've not been able to manufacture any firearms for individual ownership. So this is a semi-auto copy, uh, as we just explained, of uh, the popular Czechoslovakian uh, machine pistol. And this is made by Checkpoint in Tennessee, and it is sold as a pistol, just a pistol. Uh, this particular version was modified by InRange, also in Tennessee, uh, for the stock and is a short barreled rifle. So th this will give you an opportunity to own it a few different ways. If you live in an area where you can own a pistol, uh, just a regular Title I 
pistol, but you can't own a short-barreled rifle, you can own it as a pistol. If you can own an NFA firearm, uh, but would you know don't have any options to own a full-auto Scorpion uh, because they're not available, then you can own this nice semi-auto variant um, with an original style stock. So you have a few options here. Following along the same lines as the Scorpion is a very new introduction to the market. This is the Caracal. And the Caracal project started in 2002, received its certification in 2006, and started appearing at international trade shows in 2008. Uh, the Caracal is named after the Desert Lynx. It's made in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And as you can see, it has a shoulder stock. It's a 9mm. There is also a vertical front grip for this as well. And it's a lot of fun to shoot. Now, since the Caracal was designed so late, so far after the 1986 and back to the 1968 band, um, obviously there aren't going to be any full auto variants out there to own. So if you'd like to own one of these, you're going to be stuck with the semi-automatic. The Caracal has an 18 round magazine, so with one in the pipe that gives you a 19 round capacity. I'm not certain if there's a 10 round mag available or not, uh, but I'd be surprised if there wasn't. I'll try to look it up before we post the video and uh, put the information on here for you. Now I like firearms for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, some may be to collect, uh, some may be for self defense, some might be competition, some may be hunting, um, but I like it when they can give me the ability to hit what I'm aiming at. So let's check out the Scorpion and then we'll check out the Caracal. We've got 20 rounds in the Scorpion. In the Caracal we have 18 plus 1 so we'll have 19 rounds. We're going to put these in the red and with the Caracal uh, we're going to put those to the center of the target. So let's see how she'll perform. Notice how quiet the reset is on that, and you've really got to pay attention to keep that shoulder stock pulled nice and tight in. I think the front grip is the key to that one. Very comfortable though. So we've got options. For people that would like an NFA piece but can't find or obtain uh, either due to laws or finances uh, a full auto variant, we know the answer on this one. 
I don't believe there are any transferable scorpions, but I never say never, so there, there very well may be a few out there. But you've got the short-barreled rifle available to you. If you live in a state that doesn't allow the NFA, or you're not interested in the NFA portion, you can purchase either one of these as a pistol. We like to have options. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it with your friends. And keep on checking back. We've got a lot of other videos in the hopper that I hope you'll enjoy. Till next time, have fun and be safe.